Uh, first, um, the media in its various forms will look at um, the same issue and sometimes interpret it differently. And that the owners eventually, particularly for, uh, for you, Minister, and your team, who are in the foreign policy uh, section, uh, the onus is on you to tell your story. And um, I think uh, you have come here today to try to demonstrate that you intend uh, to tell the Zimbabwe story in the manner that you see it and seek to influence all of us who are working in the media to see the, that story in the way in which uh, you see it, in which the government sees it, in which, uh, and uh, there will be some differences along the way. Rhetorically, we say the role of the media is recognized as that of informing, educating, and entertaining. But the truth is that the media space is, is in many cases a political battleground. So that's where we meet. It is a political battleground for governments, the governed, and those who aspire to govern. So in, uh, in respect of this and where I locate uh, uh, foreign policy, I would like to make uh, three points right from the very beginning. The first is that the media is a legitimate interest in government issues for reasons of public interest, which uh, Dumi was talking about, which the minister was talking about, which uh, Deputy Minister Musabayan was talking about, which um, Ambassador Mazem also has been talking about. The legitimate interest of uh, the media in government issues for for public interest, including promoting transparency and accountability in the conduct of public affairs. The state is the one and only institutions, institution in which all citizens are shareholders. And the government is the management board. And we know what happens to management when you are managing a company or a corporate. You are subject to questioning. So, that should uh, you should take that as part of your terrain that that is natural that will come to you sometimes with very uncomfortable questions around uh, uh, issues the second uh, issue i would like to highlight minister is that the media media communication including government communication is an area which requires investment in competent skills solid structures and working systems. There is no substitute to those. There is no substitute to investing in minding or telling your own story. It is an area where you're not going to subcontract. Others can only help. But you have to develop the skills of storytelling, telling the Zimbabwe story in as interesting a manner that is going to engage with people and connect with people in their interests. And that is not an area just for the Minister of Information. As Dumi was saying, you are the face of Zimbabwe with the broader world. And um, uh, storytelling, telling the story of Zimbabwe is going to have to be a skill that uh, uh, Minister officials learn to tell interesting stories, engaging stories. The third uh, uh, point I would like to make is that that government, like all other sources of news and information, is a right to expect truthful, accurate, fair, and balanced reporting and presentation of its information from professional media workers and organizations. It's a fair, fair expectation. And uh, to the extent that it is a fair expe expectation, we must say that at the uh, aspirational level, the media must strive to play a watchdog role over power and abuse of power. That is what we do. Uh, that's why they pay us good money, sometimes uh, little money, but um, they, we, we, we in that uh, space to try play a watchdog role. Sometimes we back at the moon, you know dogs do that, uh, but uh, they, they back all the same, isn't it? Uh, on behalf of the public, it must watch the power of the state, the executive, the judiciary, the legislator, the private sector, the domination and exploitation of states uh, by, by the politically and economically powerful, the bullying 
isolation, marginalization, and impoverishment of some people by powerful forces. That's the area where we work. Uh, we, we, we don't always do it so well, but uh, at an aspirational level, that's where we are, and that's where we should be uh, meeting us. To play that lofty role, governments should recognize the centrality, as you have done, uh, Minister, the centrality of the media in the public sphere. For better or for worse, the media is the confluence where many citizens meet and share ideas, shape opinions and responses to issues. It's, um, you find that uh, media is the reference point for many people, and that is why you must play the media. You, there is no, no alternative to playing the media because that is where people play. The media, therefore, requires a healthy environment to work towards this constructive role. A healthy legislative, political, economic, and uh, social environment and a recognition of this role by both the government and the public. But this also means that the media must earn its stripes. The media must be beyond person over its commitment to truthful, accurate, and balanced reporting fair presentation of facts and opinions, and a strong commitment to political, social, and economic uh, uh, justice. Ideally, it must be a media that believes in the richness of pluralism and diversity, in good governance, transparency, and accountability in the administration of uh, public affairs. It must be motivated by goodwill for the greater public and is not driven by extraneous interests greed, hatred, or vengeance. We human beings sometimes, we pursue petty uh, uh, issues uh, because of uh, the stations that we have. We can't pretend that we are demigods because we are in a space where we get to judge other people. I think uh, the expectation uh, by the public is that we have the temperament for fairness, a commitment to accuracy, a commitment to public good. I think that is uh, that. While advancing the notion of what um, the public assumption is that the media is a knowledge industry uh, and that people who work in the industry are competent and knowledgeable, right? We assume the same of those who work in foreign affairs. That same assumption is made of, uh, of media. But while advancing the notion of what he called sensitive journalism, the late renowned uh, Zimbabwean editor William Sarurwa said the developing country required a media dedicated to high moral values of peace, unity, nation building, and political integration. A sensational journalism could be destructive. Musarurwa said far more than mere informing, educating, and entertaining, the media persuades, argues, uh, uh, it can. Um, it can misinform, it can also distort, it can miseducate, it can propagandize. That is the truth. Anything else that uh, appears that the, the media is a sanctimonious uh, God on earth among human is, is, not, uh, is not true. But the challenge is that you having to work with a media which must be competent, which must be knowledgeable, but where that competence and knowledge may also be coming short. And it is an area that uh, uh, do me and uh, uh, esteem in the Editors Forum and all colleagues who are working in the media are constantly working on that we must have the skills to manage public information in the same manner that we expect other people to be managing the same. By the pro by so Musarurwa then says, by the process of selection of information, emphasis and de-emphasis, and outright omission of some information, it is able, the media is able to influence and shape the minds of people, either for or against an issue, a government, a leader, or some individual. He said this was in 1981. Right? It's as true today for Zimbabwe as it is true for any other country. These are global issues that the media is dealing with. Beyond acknowledging and helping to defend the place of the media in a democratic country, 
what should the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade do around the media to advance Zimbabwe's national foreign policy? Firstly, I think it should take greater responsibility for telling the Zimbabwean foreign policy story to the media and through the media. It can't be addressing the media outside the media. I think that, uh, that is uh, a given. This means providing facts and figures about Zimbabwe's interactions with the rest of the world. Not when we come to you, but when you volunteer that information, it works a lot better. What is it doing to advance its interest? What are the policies? What are the programs? What is the potential? What are the problems? What are the plans? And um, what are the challenges? And what, what are the uh, plans to overcome those challenges? How well are we doing? And what is the proof of that performance? The communication must be based on facts, truth, fair, and balanced presentation. Journalists uh, like priests tend to go out trying to sniff people who tell lies. And uh, once they've um, established that uh, this one is a serial liar, uh, the relationship breaks down and uh, there is a tendency to be very negative. So the challenge is on both of us to build a relationship in which we build trust, a relationship, a love affair built on trust, making love every day in the media in order to advance uh, that. In that uh, regard, I, I, I'm um, uh, challenging the ministry to establish strong structures around communication, solid around solid substance, competent skills, and a workable strategy that you review every other day. How do you know it is working? Secondly, the rebuttal of disputed information or interpretations must be balanced against the risk of falling into a propaganda trap and failing to tell your own stories as you get bogged down on other people's narratives. I think the Minister of Foreign Affairs should avoid the temptation of uh, combative uh, uh, rebuttals of other people. Tell your story in your own words and uh, don't get dragged in other people's narratives. Thirdly, avoid the temptation to get into a propaganda war or a fight with media that is not necessarily persuaded by your story because that is likely then to become the real big story. These are just a few ideas, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, on, our, on our part in the media, we should conduct regular audits and answer the following questions. This is for us in the media. Regular audits of ourselves and answer the following questions. Is there a lack of professionalism? Can we commit more to professionalism? Do we have a, a loss of our mental balance when we are looking at certain issues? Is there use of intemperate language even where a temperate language would do? Is there an inability to manage hate language and to repeat what the other people say? Are there fear of attacks uh, among ourselves? Uh, do we live in fear or do, are we assured of our security? What is our exposure to bribes and begging? Are we subject to the framing of partisan views as our own views? Are we in danger of operating in ignorance? Thank you, Honorable Minister and colleagues, uh, for this opportunity to um, contribute to this discussion. It's not a speech. Uh, to this discussion on how, just a few ideas on how the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Zimbabwe government uh, can um, uh, work around a strong communication to communicate its own uh, story and its own. Don't subcontract the work, it's your story. You must tell the story and you tell your stories daily. Make love with the media on a daily basis. Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister and your team.